Hello everyone. If you're anything like me, sometimes a very simple project just kind of balloons into something a lot more complicated and not what you had originally intended. This is exactly that. The project started out with a way to organize and um, kind of store my tape. I realized that I'm using tape for a lot of different projects and way over there on the other side of the shop is where I store everything on my pegboard. And so if I'm working on the CNC machine over here, I have to walk all the way up to the other side of the shop, grab the tape and bring it back. And that's not all the tape I have. Some tape is held like back there and back there. So I want a central location for all of my tape storage needs. Seems really easy. You just take a two by four, throw a couple dowels in it, hang it on the dowels and just put that somewhere in the shop. Well, the problem with that is I wasn't interested in doing it because it's kind of a boring project and I just kind of kept putting it off because it's just very simple and I thought, oh, there's got to be a cooler way. So, of course, I went to YouTube and started looking and couldn't really find anything. You know, you can store tape like this on a little shelf on the wall and just nothing really grabbed me. So then I started thinking about, okay, well, where would the tape go? And this right here is my central workshop island or workbench island. So I have four workbenches. You can only see the two of them. They're about seven feet wide by three feet deep. There's one, two of them here, and there is this gap in the middle. And this gap had an original purpose. The purpose was I was gonna build this shelving system in between the workbenches. So I have something against the back of the workbenches to store stuff. So you can see where this is going. So really what I wanna do is take the tape and store it here ish. So I need some sort of shelving system for that. So ultimately what we're building is a tape holder, but of course it's going to be a lot more complicated than that. So let's start on the overall design. So here is a slightly different view of the workbench island. So maybe you can get a better idea what I'm trying to do. I've got some leftover extrusion from um, the machine arm build on my Avid CNC router. This is 40 by 80, so it's uh, 40 millimeters wide by 80 millimeters wide. And I'm going to use this to make these uprights, one, two, three per workbench pair, so six all the way down. And then I'm going to use this smaller, I think this is 30 millimeter extrusion. I'm going to use this 30 millimeter extrusion as kind of um, cross members so that I can mount shelving, I can mount pegboard, I can mount all sorts of different things. Obviously with aluminum extrusion you can mount pretty much anything to it. And in the hands of someone that has a 3D printer you can print all sorts of fun, cool accessories. So let's get started by cutting the extrusions down to a 19 inch length. That'll give me about a 18 inch rise off of the workbench because they're going to be mounted kind of uh, underneath-ish. So let's do that. I only have enough for three right now. I'm going to start with these two workbenches, see how I feel about it, and then I'm going to eventually work on the others. I've discussed this before in previous videos. I have a lot of different ways of cutting this extrusion, but if I want a simple straight cut and I don't want to have to clean it up much, the table saw is a really good choice. The only really downside to the table saw, other than it just being kind of a little sketchy and dangerous, is it just makes a horrendous mess. It throws chips everywhere, so I definitely have to clean up afterwards, but I had just been cutting some extrusion the other day, so there is already a mess, so why not just add to it? Sometimes it's actually easier to clean up a bigger mess than it is a really small mess. So yeah, just using the table saw here, using the uh, miter gauge, and just going really slow using the stock blade on the saw, and it makes some really decent cuts. Once I've got the three pieces cut to length, it's time to tap all the holes. Um, 80-20 extrusion usually has holes in either end and they're usually sized to accept either like a quarter 20 tap or a um, M8. These are set up for an M8. So all I have to do is get the spiral foot tap, throw it on the drill, throw a little tap magic on it, go in, go out, and I am done. Um, I'm tapping both ends because the bottom will be used to mount the mounting plate to the underneath side of the workbench and the top I can use to mount uh, just about anything else, but I'm probably just going to end up doing some kind of decorative end cap. So now that everything is cut and tapped, let's talk about mounting. 
Earlier this year, I actually ordered these little mounting plates. I had these um, custom made from Send Cut Send. Uh, they do plasma and laser cutting, things like that. These are quarter inch steel and they have uh, three mounting holes on each side for underneath the workbench and then the two holes that go into the actual extrusion like that. Now, something to take into consideration. I could have easily made these on the Tormach. I could have made these on the Avid CNC. I probably could have laser cut these. I have a few different ways on how to make these. However, quarter inch steel, the material alone, plus just the time and everything else, these end up being about 10 bucks a piece shipped. So this whole stack of six of them was about $60. And I also had another part made by them. Sometimes just outsourcing makes a lot more sense. It just ended up being cheaper for me to have these made. And now I have this nice big quarter inch thick steel plate that I can use to mount underneath the workbench like that. So um, yeah, let me get all of these mounted in place and then I'll have my three uprights along this gap. Getting the uprights attached really wasn't that big of a deal. I just bolted on the adapter plates, uh, mounting plate, base plate, whatever, mounted that to the bottom of them and then just kind of shoved them up underneath in between the two workbenches and screwed it in place. Um, I needed to make sure that the workbenches, I guess, were parallel to each other and I guess collinear if I'm using a SolidWorks term. I need to make sure that everything was lined up so that um, they were level and all that good stuff. And that wasn't too bad. Um, on the third one, it was a little bit tricky since it's kind of in the middle of the island. So what I did is I actually scooched the uh, workbenches together so that there was a very, very tight fit and then just kind of shoved it up and um, that held it in place and then I drove the screws into it. I'm only using like one and a half inch screws. I think that should be enough, but I can always go back and add thicker screws if stuff starts to get a little bit loose, but it's surprisingly sturdy as is. So I think it should be fine. The workbenches themselves don't really move and there's really not going to be that much load on these. So I should be okay with the six screws per support. And um, yeah, second set of hands would have been nice, but I got it all done. For the section closest to the camera, I'm going to do a pegboard on both sides. For the other section, not really sure at this minute what I'm gonna do, but definitely gonna do a pegboard on this side. So I'm just kind of measuring the pegboard and seeing if the holes line up where I want it to go. The idea is that it's going to hang from the very top, kind of come down. It'll come a little bit past the workbench itself so they won't be a seam there. It'll just come down below. And I'm just making sure everything lines up. Thankfully, pegboard is pretty consistent, so everything's gonna line up just fine. So I'm ripping it down to size, and then I'm going to install it on the rails. Actually installing the pegboard was a true test of my patience, and I think I, think I won. I think ultimately I won, but um, it was definitely a pretty hard test. Getting one side of it was pretty easy. Getting both sides of it was actually pretty challenging. The pegboard, does have slight variation in it, as I learned. And the bottom rail, the top rail was easy, everything just kind of drapes down from that, but the bottom rail would really only match up on one side, so I'd kind of have to adjust it a little bit, go over, and every time I made an adjustment, I'd have to take the pegboard off, and because it's kind of down inside the workbenches, you have to fully take it off, fully take it out, then adjust something, and it was just back and forth, back and forth, and I finally got it installed, but it was um, a bit of a pain. Well, it technically holds tape. As I said in the very beginning, this project started out as a way to organize and hold my tape assortment, um, which was over there on the pegboard, was kind of not in the right place. I need it kind of more centrally located in the shop. So this serves that purpose and it does accomplish that goal. So checkbox A plus for that. However, this is weird. I don't know exactly what you guys are thinking. I know I watch a lot of YouTube videos and when they kind of do the final reveal, it's like, ooh, that's nice. Or sometimes it's just like, nope. This is a big nope for me. It's weird. Um, this, this right here up until there is really cool. I like this. I like having the pegboard. It's actually very, very sturdy. Like surprisingly sturdy. Um, the workbenches are actually a lot more sturdy because of this because they're just all tied together. So that's really cool. The monitor gap is strange, is very strange. Look at that. It is just, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. Um, I could put pegboard on it, 
but then you can't really use the monitor mount in the way that it was intended. It's gonna hit it on this side. The one thing that I did do, which you can see, is I put this um, cross member right here and it does allow the monitor to still work on this side. I actually use this quite a bit. So let's say I'm using my Tormach over here, I'm using my lathe. This is nice because I can view the monitor on this side or flip it around and use it on that side. And because I have the wireless keyboard and mouse, it's, it's really nice. I can use that computer basically anywhere in this central island. So that's kind of a nice feature. Maybe I'll change that. Maybe I'll do something different with the monitor mount so I can get a little bit more usable space right there. But as it stands, it just looks really strange and unfinished. Um, maybe I need more stuff on the pegboard, who knows? What I am gonna do is after I you know, hit stop on the video and get these files off into the computer and close this project out, is I am going to get enough materials to do the rest of this workbench and maybe that will help. It's weird that it's really just kind of this one section. I think if I had this all the way down on the other side, that would actually help out tremendously. There's a lot of stuff that needs to get off of the workbench and just kind of get better organized on a pegboard or shelves or something. So I'm gonna do that separately. We'll kind of see how that goes, but this is one of those projects where it starts out as such a simple thing. And I kind of wish I just went back in time, took a two by four, drilled some holes in it, shoved in some dowels, put up on the wall and called the day because this, this was a fair amount of time. I mean, it was a few hours, um, but I really just need to be working on other projects. And I already have a few other things that I want to be working on. So I'm just going to call this a day. I'm going to hit stop recording. I'm going to go cut this video, upload it to YouTube and move on and do something else with my time and realize that scope creep is a hell of a drug. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully maybe this gives you a couple ideas of what to do or what not to do. Thanks for watching. Check me out on my Facebook page for any updates to my channel and see you in the next video.